So for part two of rest simulation, we covered in the last video, at about the 15 or 16 minute mark, we started talking about refilled rest setups. I kind of glossed over most of it. It seemed like it was an afterthought. So we're going to do this all together in its own little video. When you do a three field breast setup with non monoisocentric centric technique, you're going to start with the super clap. I have this set with the jaw Y1 to zero, Y2 set superiorly, the flash over the shoulder and the width just over to the SSN and, and, and over to about where the humeral head will be. That's a nice ballpark. I've also got this set at 100 SSD. We're going to assume a straight upright gantry. You can also do a 15 degree tilt. As you guys may recall, you do a 15 degree tilt so that you don't have divergence theoretically from the medial aspect of the superclad field into the spinal cord or possibly into the throat. It flattens out that divergence. What the heck, we'll go ahead and go 15 degrees over. Just so we talked about it, we're gonna go ahead and do that. That's how we do it at my particular facility. Your mileage may vary. So, I've got 15 degree couch kick, I've got Y1 close to zero, Y2 open to encompass the field that we're going to treat. We start with the super clap because this jaw being set to zero is going to cause a non-divergent field. This inferior aspect of this field that you see is going to be the inferior border. It actually falls at the CR. As you can see, that's where the laser is. That's the actual central ray that I've got the jaw closed down to zero once again. This creates a non-diverging beam. Rotating the gantry over once again creates less of a diverge of beam on the lateral aspect that could diverge down into the throat and into the spinal cord. Having done this, I have it set at zero or at 100 SSD. When you simulate this, you are going to have a wire that you're going to end up placing on this field border. So to go over the entire simulation, you're going to ballpark this, you're going to go out, you're going to floral, you're going to make sure everyone likes it. Once the doctor likes it, you're going to notate everything before you do anything else. Run back in the room, and the very first thing you're going to do is going to, you're going to go ahead and mark the CR. Now, if the doctor moved it around, make sure everything is where you wanted it. If it is, great. The next thing you want is a nice, flattened out wire and you're going to actually first dot in your border just like as if you were going to treat this. You guys recall that if you have a match line, you're going to use dots, not one big squiggly line and you're not so that you don't have to wonder where in the heck the actual match line is. Lay the wire. Theoretically, it'll be a longer wire than this, but I'm doing this because it was close to me. You're going to put that wire right along that border This is going to be your junction point radiographically so that you can then see exactly where your divergence from your medial lateral is going to be. So we have our wire placed. Go ahead and take your film. Get it approved. And once the film's approved, we're going to move on to do the breast. Now, all of your breast simulation that we talked about earlier for a regular non monoisocentric breast is going to be in play. You're still going to ballpark them the same. You're still going to use your lasers halfway between the midaxillary line and the anterior flash, halfway between the medial aspect of the breast and the lateral flash. We're going to assume that I've done this because I am, we've already covered that part of it. You're going to open up your field size to give yourself a little flash inferior to the inferior aspect of the breast and go to this wire. Now, I've got just a little bit of a gantry kick already. I didn't move it yet, but I'm going to give myself one to two centimeters flash from the inferior aspect of the inframammary fold. Open our field size again. You notice I'm having to walk this back and forth. It's kind of an in-out stair step. Now, I've got the top of my field ballpark to the wire. I've got my flash. I've got my width. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my gantry about 45 degrees off. It's usually going to be more than 45 degrees. I'm actually going to go 
until my CR is on my medial wire which the doctor placed and my back pointer is on my lateral wire which the doctor placed. I'm actually going to ballpark it up there. Once you kind of get to this point, take your separation. Once again, you need to have this mid-plane. Calculate your set, decide what your SD, SSD is supposed to be, and stair-step your way up to it, just like before. Now, the big difference is, we're going to assume I've got all that set correctly. At the superior end of this field, you've got a diverging beam. It's diverging up towards the gantry from the CR. We've got a flat angle of incidence here that we have to match. So we're going to kick the table. I don't know. Let me turn down the lights a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera or not. But you can eyeball where this wire is. Let me do this. You can see there's a little pie wedge of light right here. That is a hot spot. You can see there's a pie wedge of dark right here. That's a cold spot. What we're going to do is turn the table until we get rid of both of those. Okay, that's not perfect, obviously. I'm just going to walk in it a little bit. Now, that table kick just like what we talked about with head and neck, except it's the other end. Okay, that table kick now has the superior divergence minimized to match the non-diverging beam from the AP super flap. You are going to fluoro this and look at that wire and make sure that wire lays perfectly against the superior edge of your field. That is how you determine if your divergence is correct, just like with the head and neck. This is a head and neck flipped upside down and turned kind of sideways. If you think about it that way, it's not so difficult. You got the head and neck down from last time, we've just flip-flopped this, and now we've got to match to the inferior aspect of the superclad instead of the superior aspect. So, flipped it down, we've kicked the table, we're matching that match line. Now, when we go floral, we're looking at this match line and we're looking to cross both the medial and lateral wire. Once you've got all that in place and you've got the proper amount of flash, I have no flash whatsoever, you would increase the field size so that you had flash over the top. Once you've done that, you're going to carry on with your simulation just like before. You'll take your film, well actually your fluoro, doctor will look at it, you'll notate everything. Once you've notated, come inside the room, mark your CR. Once you've marked your CR, recheck your SSD. We've kicked our table, we've done all kinds of moves. Make sure the SSD is still proper. If you've still got a good SSD, then you take your film, send it to your II, set your TFD, put your film marker on, take your film, <clears throat> get it approved. Once it's approved, then you have to then move the entire gantry around to the opposite angle. You have to mirror your table. That's the one thing that's going to be different. I'm six degrees off on the table. <clears throat> what you want to do is mirror your table to the opposite. You want to be six degrees the opposite way. Then rotate your gantry around. Just like we said before, watch your image intensifier coming around the back side. You can hit the image intensifier coming around. You can also hit the patient's arm. Obviously not a problem on her. You can hit the patient's arm with the collimator head coming around this way. So, since you've already notated your table settings, you know you can move the table left, left, right, move around, clear everything, don't hurt your machine, don't hurt your patient, not necessarily in that order. Put the patient back left, right where they go, and then start with your lateral. Check your SSD, take your film, get it approved, mark the patient up, and then you're pretty much done. As I, said, as I may or may not have said on film before, the last thing you want to do on one of these, if you want this to be a three-point setup, we're going to move the table back and we're going to kick the table back to zero. The last thing you can do to give yourself a three-point setup, raise your table until your laser is on your lateral mark and give yourself a mark on the opposing side. Now you've got a three-point setup. And there's your wire. And there's the wire. See, there we go. I can Turn, I can turn the light back on. It was the laser falling oh, okay. right along with it, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, that in a nutshell is a three field with a table kick to account for the superior divergence. 
On our next video, we'll talk about monoacid centric. It's a lot easier.